नमस्कार ओके टुडे आई एम हियर टू टॉक टू यू अबाउट दिस लवली बुक इंडिया इन फ्री फॉल 2024 रिटर्न बाय संजय झा नो आई डोंट वांट आई आई डोंट नीड टू इंट्रोड्यूस संजय झा टू माय ऑडियंस आई नो ऑल ऑफ यू ऑल नो हिम अ लॉट ऑफ यू ऑल आर बिग फैंस ऑफ हिज लवली बुक यू नो वन ऑफ द थिंग्स that i'm so i i i follow sanjay ji a lot i i follow him in social media i follow his work i follow his writings is because he is possibly the only person i know there could be more i don't know the only person i know who has quit a party but never quit the ideology bhai aaj ke politics mein na it is very very rare and that's precisely why i have a lot of respect for him so let's get right into the show let's get into another episode of dialogue and let's talk India in free fall 2024 Sanjay thank you so much for joining me thank you so much for joining me what a lovely book Sanjay superb as always you write beautifully your flair of writing is amazing your language mm. absolutely you have taken a lot of inspiration from shashi tharoor because uh, <laughs> <laughs> your language is amazing but before i get into the book i want i have a small observation to make sure uh, then we sure. will talk about the book in detail mm-hmm. you know you spoken about something very interesting which we'll talk in detail which is terminal moral crisis in the nation that's something that you have spoken about you have spoken you have spoken about police comes knocking you have spoken about corona handling you have spoken about crony capitalism you have spoken about broken promises you have spoken about blackberry versus inc i love that we'll talk about that you have spoken about manipur you have spoken about a lot of issues but one thing which i realized after reading the last page of your book is uh, a lot of these chapters if you remove the name bharatiya janata party and you put the name congress then also the concept is quite relevant isn't it uh, 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 sanjay you know sujit trust you to bowl such a anil kumble googly combined with bhagwat chandra shekar's you know spin in it uh, you know i i i agree that if you look at india's political circumstances today uh, it, it, it i think is deeply worrying i see a lot of you i see you for example let me return the compliment you have been extremely generous with me in the introduction uh, I, i think there are people who are valiantly trying to fight what we need to accept without trying to pussy foot around or you know kind of uh, flirt at the periphery we are battling a serious crisis of epic proportions the future of a great country and i feel when you look at the congress and the bjp as two principal parties uh, with a massive responsibility of uh, you know leading the country to another zone of success and prosperity and oneness uh, it, it is disturbing how things have really played out and i for for one i'm surely i would say disconcerted by the fact that at a base level a lot of people seem to have almost accepted whatever is going on and a lot is wrong as the new normal and to uh, once again to paraphrase you uh, both the national parties the bjp in terms of his brutal aggressive uh, authoritarianism which i think was bordering fascism whether we accept it or not that's the truth and the congress party for a party that fought for india's freedom struggle successfully defeated the british with the collective enterprise of all the brave people of india has miraculously underperformed in the last 10 years and given bjp literally a red carpet welcome to go ahead and commit harakiri with india's constitution and its democratic morality both parties that's the that's the reason why i keep pointing out what i hear from a lot of people that the bjp is definitely responsible for taking india backwards in a very regressive sort of a way the congress is equally culpable for not stopping this onslaught a lot earlier and even later uh, its effort has been more ham-handed and like a desk or as opposed to be one of a determined challenger out there to save the country 
संजय आई वॉन्टेड टू स्पीक टू अबाउट दिस कॉन्सेप्ट विच यू सो वेल पुट यू कॉल इट टर्मिनल मॉरल क्राइसिस ऑफ द नेशन सो वेन यू टॉक अबाउट टर्मिनल मॉरल क्राइसिस ऑफ द नेशन हु एग्जैक्टली डू यू हैव इन माइंड द पॉलिटिशियंस और द सोसाइटी एट लार्ज आई वुड से दट द सोसाइटी सीम्स टू हैव बिन ब्लजेंड इन टू इन टू बींग either subjugated or being forced into self censorship where people have forgotten to protest i'll give you an example you know i've been with the congress for a very long time and uh, i remember the angst with or the the pure uh, you know what i call is the moral outrage with the arvind kejriwal anna hazare agitation on corruption it brought down the upa government finally and that was in 2011 it started it ended up with the rout of the upa what you are seeing in the last 10 years is i think heightened corruption you know frankly if you look at demonetization it's a massive scam it has to be still investigated uh, but we accepted that 140 people dead no black money to be found you heard the supreme court judge the other day but we are okay in the cag scams that have since been revealed in fact in the latest one which we read some time ago if you aggregate the numbers is over 7 lakh 75000 crores no problem because the big media is probably quiet if you look at electoral bonds that is not just corruption there's criminality there's extortion there is crony capitalism and i don't see the kind of outrage yet that i would have probably expected again maybe because the big media is burying the news down and maybe the opposition needs to do more but either way i ask myself this question where is the anger gone you remember sujit that uh, the entire country was up in arms when that horrific nirbhaya rape happened since then there have been horrible cases in india manipur is a is a perfect example of that and then you have had the women wrestlers protesting you have seen how bilkis banu's rapists were released and we are kosher with that are we i mean to me these are stunning manifestations of a country and i'm not blaming the people but i do want to say that there seems to be a degree of ambivalence and ambiguity when it comes to moral standards actually what sauce for the goose should be sauce for the gander but if the congress by the way which lost on corruption charges that were notional that were not even real the 2g case was thrown out in the coal case you have navin jindal now in the bjp you have uh, mr praful patel of the air india acquisitions in the bjp but the truth is demonetization is a reality rafael i don't think has been investigated yet you can blame rahul gandhi for chokidar chor campaign that may not have worked in a lok sabha where pulwama and balu could became the main theme but was rahul gandhi wrong i don't think so i don't think rafael case has yet been fully investigated the truth is that the deal was given to a big industrialist who was gone bankrupt and it was taken away from india's famous defense manufacturer called hindustan aeronautics is anybody even questioning these i mean these are fundamental points arvind kejriwal is in jail on charges of corruption in a delhi liquor case but the man who was the kingpin who turned the prover gave 50 crores to the bjp and we are okay i mean to me these are like absolutely befuddling it's like watching an agatha christie mystery where you don't know what is going to unravel what is going to surprise shock or you know send us into a slumber i think there is also while the opposition can be blamed please remember the opposition is not on a level playing field on media on investigation on institutions on election commission and at some point i think the people will definitely speak i'm waiting and i do believe very optimistically that might still happen in 2024 sanjay what you just mentioned you've mentioned that in detail in your book uh, all of the cases that you've mentioned you've mentioned in detail in your book and uh, you spoken about bilkis banu and i want to go back to that particular case that too you've mentioned in detail in the book you've changed the name of for obvious reasons but you've mentioned in detail now tell me bilkis banu's rapist were set free thanks to supreme court they are back but they were set free what did the society do so are we just 
washing our hands off and leaving it all to politicians to say that BJP did everything wrong, which they did. Of course, I have no doubt about that in my mind. I agree to every every word you said it in, said in the book. But isn't it also our fault? We kept quiet too, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. I I wish more politicians had spoken up. I wish civil society was a lot more vocal. I mean, uh, I mean, you read Bilkis Banu's case. I mean, she saw her family being murdered in front of her eyes, her three-year-old child. And to give her justice, they had to transfer the case out of Gujarat. And on the at the time when Narendra Modi is giving a speech from the Red Fort, celebrating Azadi Ki Amrit Mahotsav, you release the rapist of Bilkas Ban, and the central government had a role to play in it. It's not easy to just blame the Gujarat government. And we are silent. I mean, and then the prime minister has the audacity to talk of Nari Shakti. And I'm like, how can women voters even vote for this party anymore? Is it because she belongs to a minority community that people turned a blind eye? Is she not a citizen of this country who deserves justice? I mean, eventually the Supreme Court of India has to intervene. And you had people celebrating the release of the convicts, the rapists. Some of them even said that, you know, apparently some of them are Brahmins and their sanskar should give them a redemption. I mean, how outrageous, how absolutely vulgar can you become? And I agree with you. I mean, I was shocked. I mean, here is Mr. Modi. According to opinion polls, if they are to be believed, Sujit, apparently a front runner. Can I tell you something very honestly? In no democracy in the world would a prime minister or a president have survived not going to a part of his country where there was serious ethnic violence, where hundreds died, thousands went homeless, where the ethnic conflict hasn't yet completely ended, there is still a lot of simmering tension. And the president of the prime minister hasn't even visited there once. I'm, I'm talking about Manipur. And Mr. Modi is still considered to be an administrator. I'm sorry, I disagree with that. If you ask me, electoral bonds tells you how corrupt this government is, how criminal have the institutions become, how India has been handed over to a bunch of oligarchs. And we are happy because the stock market is booming with, you know, some stocks playing up the hype. I mean, it's, it's very befuddling. I, I know a lot of people, you know, who are, uh, you know, who are like secular, liberal, very abused words in today's times, who go to sleep in the night and ask themselves in the morning, what really is going on? Is this, this is so surreal. It feels as if we are living in another planet. I can tell you for a fact that if Dr. Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister or Rahul was the Prime Minister with these issues, the media would have reduced the government to 25 seats and the BJP would have done that if, of course, there was a level playing field. And I think that is really the differentiator. And I do hope somewhere the silent voter or the thinking Indian, you know, who probably recognizes that there is something drastically wrong with India wakes up and delivers a verdict in 2024 that restores the health of a great country. But one thing I have to ask you, you see, most of your, uh, your narrative, most of what you wrote is about, are about politicians. Uh, police comes knocking. Absolutely. The whole country will agree to you. EDIT is how they, how this current government uh, uh, operates, our current government administers. One doesn't disagree. But that being said, there is a Nawab Malik, there is a Vallabh Gaurav, there are politicians, there is a, a, a Ajit Pawar who has jumped political parties without absolute consideration, any consideration for ideology, any consideration for the people. Now, while you can blame the government for, uh, for kind of putting pressure, you have to blame that politician for so easily crumbling down under pressure. We know politicians who change their flags overnight after they were called once by 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 the ED. So uh, I, I haven't. Will history forget these politicians? Well, you know, I do feel that somewhere down the line, people are aware of what's going wrong. You know, the BJP spin is it happened in the past 
whenever it did therefore we are continuing that protocol of you know getting people to forcibly move parties but let me tell you the scale the magnitude the ruthlessness the shamelessness the abuse of the institutions you are seeing today never happened before i have never heard that horse trading was being called chanakya niti i mean sam dam dhan bhed politics is about abuse of power and here were anchors talking about amit shah's great acumen in trying to circumvent the system i mean are we joking but this is what we have reduced ourselves to and as far as you know people who have become a political football the iram gayaram type you know i sometimes wonder you know sujit since you asked me this question how do these guys look in the mirror and sit with their family members especially the children because the children look up to their elders or on a dining table and talk about what they did the whole day long because you know i think most families assemble for dinner and chat about how was the day i mean how does an ajit pawar who switches parties like you know like the way one would probably uh, you know switch uh, lights in a day multiple times is absolutely absurd is atrocious i mean he's going to face his voters tomorrow i don't know what his campaign theme is going to be i would love to hear his speeches but you know it's shocking right the prime minister of this country comes campaigning and calls the ncp the naturally corrupt party you know the famous chakki piecing is talked about and there ajit pawar for the second time is is taken oath as a as a as a deputy chief minister i mean it actually in my opinion sujit is insulting the average common intelligence and respect of the of the people of india and they are being told this is the way it is going to be bro because we are in power and we have the systems under our hands this is what we're going to do to be in power the people have a chance in my opinion because the only chance you get where a mukesh ambani or a ratan tata or a or a anand mahindra or a gautam adani have the same vote as as a driver as a farmer as a worker as a railway engine driver or or the youngest 21 year old you know they all have the same vote and that's the chance for india to restore democracy but as you can see even electoral democracy is under threat today indian national congress's bank accounts being frozen threatened to be frozen uh, arvind kejriwal and the aam aadmi party leaders in jail hemant soren in jail and an election commission who's openly looking away from clear violations of the model code of conduct and why should the election commission have a problem if all political parties say have a vv pat and a evm reconciliation nobody is saying don't do away with the evm they're saying do a reconciliation right which is like do a double check just to make sure that democracy is 100% safe that if sujith has voted for the congress and sanjay jha has voted for the congress or i have voted for the cpm or you have voted for samajwadi party the votes go to these respective parties that's that's what the voting process is all about to authenticate it to make it legitimate why is the election commission having a problem it's a question that we all need to ask ourselves and i'm not even going to go down into the detail of the constitution of the election commission which by itself is a daylight farce how are we as a country responding to all this will be determined but my biggest fear sujit is this that if modi and the bjp were to win this election just pause and think for a moment if you were narendra modi today or you were amit shah or you were a bjp leader and you said i have given i'm i've got a disastrous track record on unemployment i have not been able to contain food inflation well private investment is sluggish we destroyed the msme sector post demonetization farmers are still on the streets and protesting the women have seen serious escalation in sexual crimes institutions are dead politicians are in jail there's acquisition of corruption criminality crony capitalism and worse we have divided society on very vicious communal lines and if despite that we win the election then i tell myself well i have just got a license to probably accelerate my project of creating hindu rashtra of becoming a full grown elected autocracy probably celebrate the arrival of a proper putin model and uh, 
hey, you're damned because that's what you wanted, right? I'm giving it to you. That to me, Sujit, is the biggest fear if the opposition were to lose this election. Sanjay, you know, the advantage of talking to you is you have both the perspective. You have the perspective of Bharatiya Janata Party as an opposition. While you are in Congress, you also have a Congress perspective. So you know what happens. in Tell me, Sanjay, uh, is the Congress a bad opposition party? I mean, listen, all that you said and all that you, you've written, all that I agree. But what has the Congress done? Has, has the Congress stood by Bilkis Banu? The answer is, except for a few years in their uh, protests and some remarks by Rajiv uh, Rahul Gandhi, nothing. Has the Congress really, is the Congress doing anything about uh, electoral bonds? Nothing. Is the Congress doing anything about uh, crony capitalism, yeah, Modani and all of that? Theke. To that extent, Rahul Gandhi has been spearheading that. Yeah, okay. And here you have Mr. Vallabh Gaurav who, who quit your party saying that, yeah, hey, we are, I don't want to abuse, abuse uh, wealth creators and all that. See, what is wrong with Congress party? Why, why can't Congress be a good opposition party? Congress should have been, ideally speaking, Sujit, at the moment in poll position. You look at any democracy, the opposition is actually a government in waiting. They have a shadow cabinet. They are always the competitor. In fact, there is an anti-incumbency in all, all elections. In all probability, you see the conservatives lose in the UK. You are probably seeing Joe Biden at the receiving end from Donald Trump. Of all the guys, Donald Trump might make a comeback. Can you imagine that? But the Congress is not able to make a comeback. I mean, that's, you know, just compare the UK, US and India where governments have changed or are on the verge of changing. But in India, you have a Congress that loses in 14, continues to lose in 19, and a third time round, it is not in poor position. It is, in fact, you know, struggling to make itself still politically relevant as a party that governed India for 56 years. You spoke about Congress as Blackberry. You compared it to Blackberry. Can you can you talk about it? That was very that was very fun reading. Well, let me tell you, I've been with the Congress for a long time, and you know, if you look at Blackberry, and that's the example I used, Blackberry was once such a popular rage, not just all over the world, but take the American example. The Barack Obama was obsessed with the Blackberry. In fact, he continued using it long after even iPhone came into the space, and everyone was talking about just the domination of the BlackBerry with the email service and, of course, the famous BBM. Guess what happened? It failed to innovate. It failed to believe that, you know, competition and something new can disrupt the market. It fell into the old trap of I'm too big to fail now. You know, I'm dominating the market. So, even if a competition comes up and takes away some of the market share, I'll have enough time to change my model and recapture the space. It doesn't really happen that way. And in politics as well, you can't take it for granted that just because you were a big political party, you will always be a big one. And I think that to me is the worry that the Congress party, in my opinion, the big mistakes it's made is not demonstrating the hunger to come back, which I think is a leadership issue. Because the leadership has to galvanize the hunger within its the masses and especially amongst your workers. The hunger to win, missing in the Congress. And the fact that the Congress refused to learn from mistakes. I'll give you one example. After the India Alliance was stitched in the Mumbai where you and I live, and I remember how happy we were to hear about the India name and the Mumbai meeting that happened the 1st of September. You had the general elections coming up in April. Everybody knew it, right? In April 2024. Yes. Between September to December, the Congress party makes no effort to bring the India alliance together to close the seat distribution, get make Nitish Kumar a convener, and ensure that the common minimum program is ready. It should have all been ready by December, three months max. You don't need more time. And you were ready from January to take the world on. Guess what happened? The Congress was trying to do well in the assembly elections, fair enough, but at the cost of the alliance. And that's how you give advantage to the BJP. That tells you the problem with the Congress. Now, the, the manifesto is great, but now you're basically left in the last few weeks to get the message out without the support of big media, 
etc etc will the party be able to do it well i wish them the best you know you spoke about three myths i want to draw your attention to that three myths yeah. you said the congress is too big to become extinct who are you addressing to congress or the or the voters <laughs> no i i'm just saying here you know sujit that you know there are too many examples of political parties that over a period of time just lose their base and the base begins to wither you know for me the big worry is that the congress vote share seems to have bottomed at around 20% but i only hope that the congress is not complacent because the voters are changing you have new voters coming in and the new voters who are coming in have not seen the congress government at all i mean you know today if you look at those who are going to vote in this election many of them are those who are born after 2005 and 6 who by the time dr manmohan singh's government fell were probably too young to know what politics was about all they have seen is modi and you know all this muscular nationalism you know i g20 and we are the ones who are going to shape india's destiny why do you think is modi always talking about and one of modi's very favorite candidates apparently who said india is got independent after 2014 <laughs> and has apparently in some interview talked about the first prime minister you know there is a don't think these are casual statements this is the ide ideological mindset of a party where the whole focus is on changing history because the new people who are coming in should hear a different narrative and when they open their ncert textbooks the history is going to be different as well so i can tell you this is a very orchestrated a very well calibrated campaign being run with methodical efficiency with the ultimate objective to completely deodorize or brainwash people and make them ready for the new india that is envisaged by the great bjp which i think should worry all of us who believe in the original idea of india of being democratic secular liberal and committed to india's constitution sanjay the second myth you talk about then is related to what you just spoke you said that the you say that the bjp will lose uh, on anti incumbency it doesn't seem to be happening bjp is talking about 400 par uh, uh, in in places uh, where uh, congress was government bjp has come and come and uh, 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 dominated uh, madhya pradesh yeah. uh, rajasthan yeah. I mean, if yeah. there was some amount of anti-incumbency in the center, that would have reflected in the state. So, no, fair enough. The, the point I have made is that the BJP won't lose on pure anti-incumbency. That's the point I'm making there, basically. That if the Congress believes that the BJP will self-destruct or any political party will actually annihilate itself because it's been on par for too long. and it will have done lot of evil stuff like electoral bonds or it will have polarized society on hindu muslim politics which is all happening but yet why is modi and the bjp getting away there's a simple reason that when you are empowered you control the narrative can you imagine some of the most banal statements of mr modi makes a headline on the day the congress released his manifesto narendra modi called it as a prime minister it said it reminded him of the muslim league i mean i have never heard a more ridiculous absurd atrocious preposterous statement i try to think in my mind why would modi say that i mean he said every page is divisive and you know reeks of some kind of a disruptive and a very uh, you know dangerous culture where is providing jobs Uh, you know giving women reservations taking doing a caste survey is it anti indian is giving farmers a higher wage anti indian so why did he say that but you realize when you are in power you control the narrative and both he's done that because he is controlling institutions he's controlling the media we all know it uh, sujit so i think if the congress believes that anti incumbency will will beat the bjp naturally the answer is no i'm sure there is a lot of anti incumbency but you have to work doubly harder to not just convert that into your pro incumbency but you have also win new voters therefore the challenge is twofold you take away the disaffected voter and you win the new voter who's tried neither 
And I think that's where the Congress has underestimated the power of the BJP's propaganda, the social media trolling, the power of fake news, the personality cult of Narendra Modi, and maybe, probably, I mean, obviously in 10 years, the government will do something, right? I mean, for God's sake, Sujit, if you and I were running the country for 10 years, wouldn't we at least build infrastructure? Are road to banayenge, highway to banayenge, cylinders to denge. Is that a big deal? Uh, I just wonder why there's so much hype over this La Bharti, etc. I mean, any government in a state of center spends on its people. I mean, every government does good work. I mean, Navin Patnaik's done something good in Odisha, right, to win for so many years, as is DMK. So the truth is that, you know, everything here is packaged. So Mr. Modi will go to every place and inaugurate a train. He will come to Mumbai and inaugurate, uh, you know, uh, uh, some kind of a, a, a new trans harbor, you know, kind of a freeway. Fair enough. Do it. No problem. But that's what governments are supposed to do. I'll give you one example. I've dedicated a whole chapter to it. During the time of the pandemic, to save lives was a responsibility of every government in all over the world. Mr. Modi made that into a marketing tool. Did any leader in the world, Sujit? put their faces on a vaccine certificate. I mean, it, it reached a very, what I call is a very crude level, a visceral desperation to promote oneself in the hour of what I thought was India's greatest tragedy. But then I guess public morality has been influenced by the political narratives. And I sometimes feel that a country becomes like its leader. Sanjay, uh, you know what, uh, uh, at, at one level, political experts, political science say that uh, in a democracy, normally uh, uh, party doesn't get elected, uh, uh, the, the government gets thrown out. So at some level, uh, that is what people say. At some level, uh, yes, uh, they say that there is either a wave or there is an undercurrent. So undercurrent throws out and wave gets in and all of that. I, I am going back to your myth too. I'm going back to what you said uh, and rightly said, uh, my apologies, what you rightly said is uh, that uh, anti-incumbency will not affect uh, Bharatiya Janata Party. And what you also, your solution is that you should be interacting with the new voters. You should create a narrative with the new voters. So you have the new voters on your side. Tell me, Sanjay, what has any political party, forget, forget Congress, what has any political party done so far to even... Uh, Address the new voter. Forget about uh, building a, a relationship. Even address the new voter. What have, what have uh, these uh, political parties done? Let me tell you, zero. You know, one of the one of the things I believe uh, I want to actually. In fact, I had suggested to to, to Rahul uh, Gandhi in in a very detailed way was it become the voice of climate change in this country. You look at the young people's problems, Sujit. Today's young, the issues, what are the issues that bother them is one, the very excessive use or shall we say digital consumption, mental health, jobs, safety and security, education and climate change. How many people really talk about it? You will struggle to find one or two leaders in India's parliament. I'll probably name Sashi Tharoor as one, definitely. Rahul in bits and parts. But you'll barely find leaders who are able to address all these issues at one time. Why can't India have people who can address these problems? No political leader in this country is talking about mental health. As if it's a taboo subject. I love the fact that the Congress, though, mentioned same-sex marriage. Bold decision. Extremely bold. I personally know that Rahul would be very uh, green friendly. But, you know, he, you know, he had to take that position more aggressively. You know, you can't expect Narendra Modi to do that. I mean, uh, I don't want to pun it, but, you know, he's so he's so much in love with people in the fossil fuel space. I don't have to name them that their thinking is fossilized. So don't expect miracles from that. And that's an opportunity for Rahul Gandhi in the Congress to appeal to the young. Talk of climate change, mental health, talk of jobs, which I think the Congress has done rather well. But, you know, don't alienate the urban middle class either. 
you know there, there is uh, in indian politics you can't have dichotomies we are a very complex country okay uh, everyone is aspirational it's not just the uh, the person below the poverty line who wants to become a middle class the middle class wants to own uh, a sexy suv wants to go abroad and stay in london in a fancy hotel why just keep going to sri lanka and the far east everyone wants to dream big and why not i just feel that in this environment where the congress probably could be making a mistake is that you know crony capitalism is taking india's growth down absolutely right i'm glad rahul has attacked crony capitalism very aggressively but don't appear anti industry as a result of that because the congress is the one which has been we should be credited for actually india's economic reforms dr manmohan singh is the harbinger of the biggest change in india's destiny congress should not lose that position because the middle class of india which by the way can be very opportunistic they are not aligned to any political party wherever they get again they will stand by that because they believe they deserve a good deal because they studied hard they deserve a fair deal i think the congress in not having enough dialogue with the middle class may have probably lost a big chunk of support because modi is getting away despite the fact that his policies have been very anti middle class urban and unemployment has been high people have suffered on account of high oil prices india's young today are actually living in extremely difficult times have you seen the number of people who have left india in the last 10 years close to 2 million have surrendered their citizenship we live in urban ghettos in metropolitan cities and i think there are no jobs and nobody is talking about issues that actually confront them the abuse of technology surveillance these are things that bother them you know climate change etc health no conversations and actually how mr modi gets the support of the middle class is absolutely because the middle class because the opposition hasn't really communicated enough there is still time it can still be done Sanjay, uh, I want to go to your myth three. Before that, I just want to make one statement here. You see, the point is, uh, somewhere down the line, the opposition, and I am not going to stick to Congress alone. The opposition, normally, you first form trust and then you put up an offer. You just can't go, uh, you know, off the bat, give an offer and expect people to kind of go gung ho about it. Uh, you form a trust. You form a relationship. Somewhere down the line, I believe that. right true and true that trust factor that relationship factor especially with the with a very very uh, very uh, important factor that you mentioned the new voters i think that has not been built uh, would you agree to that uh, absolutely I, i can tell you that the problem with most politicians is they live from one election cycle to another and they all take the new voters so much for granted they believe that the new voter is very young but they should realize that the new voter is likely to be significantly influenced by their families and if the families have not voted for you the last time the new voter is more susceptible to voting for who they voted the last time in case their preferences haven't changed therefore the opposition needs to fight harder on the new voter and say listen you have a mind of your own and you need to look at your future differently and i am going to be your platform because see at the end of the day you know to believe that the new voter will just kind of have exercise their own mind doesn't really happen that way we do credit to the young of the country who are you know frankly independent thinking many of them are influenced and impressionable because at a young age you are impressionable you are so vulnerable to propaganda because you are not aware enough of the dynamics of the past so i do feel that when there seems to be a sentiment that mr modi's party has been more popular then you can assume that the new voter who's coming in is likely to more buy into that perception as opposed to the opposition not entirely but is the potential of sticking with the status quo rises and therefore i feel that the opposition misses these opportunities how many leaders do you find in india sujit who truly meet young people in town halls i mean they don't do that you know i for example have been disappointed that the congress party doesn't come to mumbai enough this is where the congress party was born this is the commercial capital of india i would have liked the congress leaders to come and do interviews with sujit nair here in mumbai big media is ditching you meet meet other people this is the entertainment capital of india this is the 
commercial capital of India. There are intellectuals in the city. And this is, you know, frankly, a gigantic cosmopolitan, uh, shall we say, microcosm of India's diversity. Has the Congress done enough here? No. And then we will ask me next question. Well, look, Sanjay Dirupam, ex-Mumbai president, had to move because you have neglected perhaps one of the most important cities. I, I personally feel, if, you know, Delhi may be the capital, but Bombay or Mumbai is the more loved city amongst people who come uh, from different parts of the country or even from overseas. And I want to talk about this here. I want to talk about that, Sanjay. I, I have four minutes and I want to I want to squeeze this question in because this sure. is a very interesting point that you've raised. You say in mid two, in mid three, I'm sorry, that the Congress is India's default operating system. Uh, please explain this. This is very interesting. What do you mean <laughs> Congress is not default operating well, well, you system? Know, that, you that's what that? I said. That's what I said. That is the myth that they create. That's a myth. Yeah, yeah, the yeah Congress it's, they're is not, is what I said. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah. The Congress's myth, I remember meeting leaders and, you know, many leaders of the Congress, whom I know very well, uh, are aware. I'm not saying something through the top of my hat. But so many people believed and said it to me that we are like India's default operating system. If you put on the computer, this is when it reboots. This is where it's going to be because we are the ones who understand governance the natural party of governance. And I think this complacency or hubris comes because you've been in power for a very long time. So one way you have to cut them a bit of the slack because the Congress has been in government for so long at the center and the states. I mean, they believe that perhaps rightfully to a great extent that we have created the modern India, which is true. You know, Nehru's you know, entire democratic construct the industrial policy, the IITs, the IIMs, the AIMS. If you really look at the India story, under Pandit Nehru, you created a modern India, secular, liberal with a constitution, a law and order, a functioning democracy. Now, the problem with the Congress was it assumed because it was in part for so long, never lost a national election till 1977. And then, of course, in, in practically governed all states to the late 1960s, you believe that the opposition was literally non-existent or at the most they were pesky irritants who would come and not be able to survive the heat in the kitchen when it came to governors. Now, I think that was a mistake. The times change. As India, you see, the, the tragedy for the Congress is you developed India. Under Dr. Manmohan Singh, India's golden phase of economic growth, an average growth of around 7.8 percent, lifted 270 million people out of poverty, brought laws like RTI, Lokpal, anti-corruption laws, and you lost on corruption. Can you beat that? Mandrega Food Security Act on which Modi is surviving today. And the Congress forgot that when you do good things, you got to be prepared to deliver more things because people will expect more. It's a very natural uh, anthropologist study of human evolution. Everyone. So if Virat Kohli scores 100 in the last match, well, you got to score 200 in the next. I mean, you don't get a respite from expectations. The Congress took a backseat. It said, well, I've done well, so you got to vote for me because the other guy has no experience. And the few times they have been in power, they have been a disaster. Well, unfortunately, your perception wasn't good in 2014. You did not fight hard enough to correct that perception. And you underestimated the opposition. Modi and the BGP came to power and they said, listen, we have got the grand old party reduced to 44. Now, they are people who have governed this country. They are our toughest political foe. And if you look at Modi's campaigns and the BJP's conduct thereafter, it is to destroy the Congress. You know, when Modi said Congress Mukt Bharat, as a Congress believer, as a Congress ideologue, I was more angry than perhaps 99% of the Congress leaders sitting in parliament. I would have taken that as a challenge. And the day Modi said Congress Mukt Bharat, if I was Rahul Gandhi, if I was one of the you know leaders who was in the Congress Working Committee, I would have made a war cry. And said, you know what, guys, that's a war cry for India's democracy and constitutionalism. An attack on the Congress is an attack on what India, the idea of India that we believe in. 
And from that day onwards, I would have made sure that every day counts. Unfortunately, the Congress didn't have the same bigger impassion. So we'll continue the good fight. But I do hope the Congress wakes up to the reality that tomorrow is another day. The past is history. You got to live in the moment and work hard. There is no respite from the fact that ultimately what works for you is pure and simple hard work. Sanjay, my last question and a candid one and um, a personal question. Sure. Outside of this book. Sanjay, I want to know why haven't you joined another political party? I want to know that uh, Congress was not fair with you. Congress was not fair to you at all. At least that's what we believe, sitting outside and watching what happened to you. Congress was not fair to you. Why didn't you quit Congress? Why didn't you throw out Congress? People who Congress gave tickets have uh, dumped the Congress. Uh, why didn't you dump Congress? Why didn't you join another party? I understand. You have, you're always said. I remember I was speaking to you then when you said that I will not uh, quit my ideology. I remember speaking to you then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why not Samajwadi party? Why not NCP for crying out loud? Why, 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 not, why not any of these parties? Why haven't you joined another party? Are you still in love with Congress? It's like that relationship that you, one has, you know, you don't want to quit. Uh, you want to still stick to your ex. What exactly is this? <laughs> yeah, to borrow the U2 song, I can't do with you, can't do without you. <laughs> uh, yeah, But you know, you know, as I believe that uh, politics without your ideology is like a car without an engine. Uh, you know, you, you, what do you, what are you without, without the core? You know, I, I mentioned in the book that when I was a young guy in school, my father was a professor and he used to buy us a lot of books at home. Our house always had libraries and uh, he would just gift us books on birthdays and stuff. And, uh, and the books he gave me was The Discovery of India, My Experiments with Truth. So I grew up reading the Gandhi Nehru books. And, uh, you know, I, I feel somewhere it was a major influence. Uh, and I still remember 1971, Mrs. Indira Gandhi after the war driving in Pune, where I lived, now called Pune. And I went up in the morning. I was ready to go to school. And her car drove off. There was hardly any security. And she was waving. And I was so excited because I thought she waved at me. And, you know, so the romance with the Congress, therefore, is uh, very much of a, a childhood, uh, you know, association that happened because of the family indulgence in the party's uh, philosophy. Uh, although I have said so openly that my mother was a diehard Congressy. My father, I always thought, was an in-closet uh, supporter, maybe, uh, of, of Atal Bihari Vajpayee, etc. But, but my house was a liberal home. And I think I, I loved the way the Congress eventually, I thought, would shape up uh, India's destiny. But here is the catch. My differences with the Congress were more to do with exactly what I've said on your program today, uh, Sujit, not demonstrating the hunger to fight. I think the BGP today is successful because the Congress has given it to it on a silver platter. I believe like in sports and in politics, your opponent doesn't beat you. It's you who lose it. You hit the ball in the net, which is why he wins. You hit the ball over the net, it's probable that he may hit it out or even he may hit it in the net. So it all depends. You know, I don't think the Congress has really fought hard enough. Uh, should I blame the Congress entirely? Not really, because, you know, I, 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 I'm I, not uh, Esan Faramosh kind of a guy. Uh, I believe that my baptism into politics happened because of the Gandhis who brought me into the Congress in 2004 uh, informally before I formally became uh, an office bearer of sorts when I became a, a national spokesperson. So I joined the Congress because of the Gandhis, and they have been wonderful with me at a personal level. My problem was political and ideological. And I think I was one of the few guys who did not look at politics as a career for myself alone. I wanted to make a difference here, which a lot of people in today's time say, are you mad? Many people came and told me, you're an oddball of Indian politics. You are suspended. You are introduced as a suspended guy, which is supposed to be some sort of mortification. But I don't take it as a mortification or an embarrassment or a humiliation. I feel, uh, you know, I, I want to convey a message that actually, why should I be an oddball? I should actually be the standard of Indian politics. Why should anybody leave one political party and join another just because you're not doing well? Figure out a way. You know, a marriage goes through its ups and downs. Do people just walk out of marriages left, right and center? They don't, right? They figure it out. People have differences among siblings. If kids have problems with their bosses. They don't leave a company every other day. It's pretty normal. So you got to figure out that answer. 
I feel that's a tragedy of Indian politics. The people just kind of dropping, uh, you know, their current assignment and ideology and moving to somewhere else. You know, it is a photo op. It's a celebration today, right? Ayaram Gayaram is a celebration. When when Gaurav Vallabh left to join the BJP, there were photo ops, and he's proudly talking about, you know, Congress should not have said this about Sanatan Dharma. Somebody is giving him that, you know, saffron shawl or whatever. I mean, it's preposterous that the guy who the other day was critical of Modi should hear what he said about Modi and Shah earlier is now embraced in the same party. He and Sambit Patra, who had some pretty aggressive exchanges on television, are going to be partners in whatever they're going to do next. It's bizarre. So I just feel that it's better, you know, Sujit, that people realize that, well, if I'm able to make that difference, where people say that, you know, actually there is a guy in Indian politics who hasn't sold his soul, you know, who could have probably got got ahead in the Congress if he had hung in there. And, you know, Congress has not expelled me, they've suspended me. So we have this peculiar live-in relationship, uh, which sometimes can be more passionate than a marriage as a joke very often. Uh, but at the end of the day, I do feel that without an ideology, I think you are a political football. And at some point, India has to evolve as a country, as a society, as a democracy. Then I think we need to change. And let me end, therefore, with a favorable note for what the Congress says in its manifesto. Any defection will result in an automatic disqualification. I think Congress should go to town on this. You know, talk about cleansing Indian politics. Be bold. I'll, can I share something with you? I have Please. told Congress many years ago, stop taking money from RTI. I had actually communicated this, you know, the day they are not RTA, sorry, on electoral bonds. I had said, don't take a single pie from anybody on electoral bonds. This was after 2018. Had the Congress done that, it may have had no money for a while. It would have got money. It would have had the moral courage to fight on this issue for all these years. And imagine the vindication today on that issue. So, you know, politics, you got to be bold. You got to take risks. I remain an optimist, Sujit. I know a lot of people are struggling with, you know, where is India headed? India will find a way. And I do. Are hope. you working things back with Congress? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, they have been very nice with me. I, I'll be very frank. So, so will we nice. see you in Congress very soon? Honestly, I mean, so, so public statement, there is, I, I, I have not left the Congress party. I will not join any political party in my life. If at all, I'm going to be in, in a contest. If at all I'm going to, you know, be in government, it will have to be with the Congress Party. Sanjay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this time thank and you. thank you for this thank lovely you. book. Uh, I would suggest the reader should read this lovely book. Thank you so much, Sanjay. Thank you. Pleasure to talk to you as always. Pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thanks. Again. Stay ahead with our Cutting Edge News app. Instantly access the latest shots in just one minute and breaking news in just 50 words. Download now for a smarter, faster news experience.